Hey guys, this is the Articulated Marabou Muddler. And I came up with this fly after a friend of mine challenged me to fish streamers while he fished dry flies in the middle of a hatch. Well, the local beaver here summed up my performance best. Hey man, you got your ass kicked. I mean, I just couldn't compete. The streamers I had hit the water like a cannonball. They wouldn't suspend. As you can see, I caught a few. I even caught a couple of decent fish, but I was still unhappy with the performance and wanted to design a fly that could compete next time. And so let's take a look at some of the materials that I used. First, I wanted to have it land nice and light on the water, which is why I have a deer hair head and I've got light wire hooks from Gamagatsu and Daiichi. Second, I wanted it to be able to move in the water. So I've got um, flash materials here from Fly Tires Dungeon and then Marabou from Montana Fly Company. And then third, I wanted it to suspend in the water. I did not want it to drop. And so with the materials, it is light as a feather and it'll stay within that first six to eight inches of the water column on a floating line, which was absolutely what I needed. So overall, I'm extremely happy with the design and um, I wanted to mention one last thing, which is at the end, I'm going to share with you guys a really cool technique to tightening up your deer hair using a lighter. So, without further ado, let's get tying. All right, so let's get tying. We're going to start with a 2460 in size number six, and I'm going to be using my Vivas 100 thread. The first thing we're going to do is start creating a contrast color. So on the bottom, we're going to use a cream marabou. And for the tail, what I'd like to use are some nice, straight, thin fibers. So I'm going to grab about an inch worth of material right off of the, the marabou. And as far as the length of the tail, I want it to be just about the same length as the hook itself. I'm just gonna come right down on top. Make sure everything's nice and aligned. Just come right through it and then crank it down. Not worried about neatness here, okay. And then for the back part, I'm going to be using an MFC, and this is Marabou in tan and black. And I'm just basically going to match the exact same length and thickness of material, about the same amount coming off, about an inch or so, and I'm going to match that length. And I'm not worried about this looking good at all because what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this up with a dubbing loop. All right, so good. And I'm coming back down the hook. Okay, now I'm going to create my loop. Got about a three inch loop there. I'm just going to come up front to a half hitch. And now I'm gonna hit my loop. I've got a Copix marker here. This is walnut, just basically brown. And I'm just gonna walk up my thread that I've already got on here because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some space in between the wraps and I'd just rather not have the white coming through. Okay, so now it's time to actually build um, my body and I'm going to use the brown and tan marabou again and I'm just going to take off strips and what you'll notice here is that I've got really it's not as thin and wispy you can see it's got a lot of body um, and material if you have that option 
pull it off, use it because it'll make a better body for the fly as opposed to a tail. And I'm just gonna be stripping pieces off, laying it down. All I'm trying to do is create that body. And here's some more marabou, same thing, just gonna strip some off, lay it down. Again, you'll notice I'm just packing right on top of one another. I'm just looking for a little bit of uh, density here, which is why I have multiple fibers going right on top of one another. Okay, so I got the marabou, that looks good. Next, I'm gonna put a little flash down. I'm gonna start with some Fly Tires Dungeon. This happens to be Starburst. This is one of my favorite colors, which is a pearl. I'm just gonna lay it down. Just pulling out some more, laying it down. And then the other Starburst color that I'm gonna use, same from Fly Tires Dungeon. Dungeon. This just happens to be gold. And all I'm worried about are the tips here. And I know I've got extra material that's down below. I'm not worried about that because now when I put it into my Loon D Loop tweezers, I'll be able to set the length exactly how I'd like it. And I'll be able to cut off the excess. So I'm going to do a quick measurement. I'm going to want it to be about the length of the tail itself, maybe just a little bit shorter. I'm going to start by trimming off the excess here. So I'm just going to flip it upside down. Do a trim. And now I'm going to trim the fibers on the other side, basically getting rid of the excess length in my flash materials. That looks good. And I'm just going to double check my length, which is good. All right, so now time for my rotor dubber. This is from Stonefoe. Put the D loop right through. Put the materials right where I want them. I'm going to double check the length itself. The length itself looks pretty good, but I'm just going to trim a little bit more off here. All right, that looks nice. Now I'm going to start rotating slow. And now I'm going to speed up. The more twists you get into the material itself, Obviously, the more it holds things into position, grab my Velcro, pull things out. And you can see how wispy that is. That is fine. It's not thick. It's not heavy. I like it like that because now when I go to actually put the body together, it will hold and it will um, create a really nice taper. But ultimately, it'll move fantastic in the water, which is what I really want it to do. All right, so let's start wrapping it up the hook. In the first couple wraps, I'm gonna stay right back at the bend. And you can see those materials are about three quarters the length to the length of the tail itself, which is exactly what I want. And you can wrap right up. Looking nice. Looks good. Just preening it back as I come up the hook, trying to make sure I keep all those materials free. And I'm gonna hit it with the Velcro in just a second, which will release any of those fibers that potentially got stuck in there. So I'm gonna do two wraps on the dark, on the, on the back side. There we go, two on the back. Pull my materials back and now I can just do a bunch in front. Okay, I'm actually going to be putting some contrasting colors on here as well. So let's hit it with the Velcro. Looks good. 
And now I'm going to use two colors. So I'm going to use cream. And I'm basically going to create a nice light belly. So I just pinched off about half an inch there. Pinch it between my fingers. I'm going to turn my fly upside down. And basically I want the tips to hit right about where it begins again, where that the tips go into the back. So I'm going to do two loose wraps here, pull up, and then come tight in front of that and trim it off. Okay. And just lock everything in. That looks nice. And what you can see is that it is there's not a lot of material. You can see it still blends and bleeds through a little bit, which is just like a regular minnow's body. Yet we've maintained and created that nice light belly. Next, what I have is some marabou. This is olive um, marabou. And you can see the body of the feather is a little thicker. It's not just wispy. And I grabbed about a quarter inch because I don't want to be overpowering. I just want to create the illusion of that dark back. And just going to very gently hold it in position here. Same thing. Two loose wraps. Grab those tips. Make sure it's up on top. And then go in front. Tighten it down. And clip the excess off here. Making sure not to grab any of those nice fibers. Good. Now I'll just go over, tie everything down, and make sure I've got my contrast colors. You can see the back has got that nice olive. I've got that light belly. And now just one last additional touch here. I've got a material from Hairline Dubbing. This is Ice Dub Shimmer Fringe. And the great thing about this body material is that it looks just like a peacock curl. And I'm just going to grab a couple fibers because I want, again, that little bit of a hint of that dark back. So maybe I've got, at the most, 15 fibers. You can see how wispy they are, how much they move in the water, and that's really just the perfect match to really give this the back of this fly that minnow look so I'm just going to put two loose wraps get things situated because it's synthetic I can just tighten right down on it I'm going to grab the remaining shimmer fringe pieces here just kind of press them down spreading them out holding them with my left hand and now wrapping them into place okay <clears throat> very happy with how that looks. This back end is very much a fishable fly. In fact, um, I have a video called the Microburst, and this is exactly that fly. I love it um, to use it as a chop dropper because it's so light and it just wiggles like absolute mad in the water and it drives the fish crazy independently on its own. All right, so I've got a Prismacolor here. All I'm looking for is an olive. I'm just gonna hit it a little bit. And that, that green, I do not like, so I'm just gonna hit it a little bit with this brown just to darken it up. That looks much better. The green was just overpowering. overpowering. All right, that looks much better. Hit it with a little Gorilla Glue. We are good. Okay, so that's the back part done and done. Next, what I've got is a little bit of um, Orvis. This is just some mono in 25 pound. And I've just cut off about a four inch piece of it. And I've got some eight uh glass beads that I got from Michael's Craft Store. And I just uh, threaded a copper bead on there. I'm just going to come right through the eye of the hook. 
and then back through that bead. All right, next I'm just gonna pull tight, just basically to help align things. Now it's on to the front hook. Okay, so the front hook here is a Gamagatsu B10S size number eight. And we're going to use the exact same thread, Beavis 100. So, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach that back hook. I've got the, the mono, the bead. Now, the trick here is just aligning the mono so it goes side by side. And I'm gonna lay it right across the side of the front hook, the B10S. Just get it in there nice and loose. Align things, you wanna maintain about a one inch gap between your front and your back hook where it's gonna be completely ineffective. And I'm just gonna wrap up the hook about half the way. Hit this with some Gorilla Glue just to lock that mono in place. And I haven't used wire in years. I find that it kinks. I find that it causes all sorts of problems, especially when you catch multiple fish on the fly. It can wear through and it can actually um, impede the motion of your, of your fly, which is really annoying. All right, so I've trimmed it off, the mono, just wrapping it down. This is where that Vivas 100, you can really crank down on that mono to make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so I'm happy with the position of the fly. I'm just gonna clamp it down using my hair clip. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build a dubbing loop. So I'm going to do this one only about two inches in length. I'm going to go up, just do a half hitch. And we're going to build the dubbing loop exactly the same way that we built the last one. So I'm going to grab some more of the MFC Marabou in tan and black. And again, I don't have to create the dubbing loop as large as the last one, but the exact same rules apply. So I'm going to lay down the material, trying to keep the tips aligned. That looks good. Again, I'm just pulling the materials out to make them as straight as possible. Laying them down. That looks good. And that's about two inches, but I think I'd like a little bit more material in there just to fill it out. So I'm just going to strip a little more and lay it right on top. So that looks good. All right, nice. Next, my two Fly Tire Dungeon Starburst materials. Gold, looking good. Laying it down, nice. And then my next starburst material in pearl. Okay, that looks great. Next, I'm going to take my loon D loop tweezers. I'm going to go right in, grab a hold of as much of the materials as I can. Looks good. I'm going to trim the, the back just to get the excess materials out of the way. I'm going to trim the front. I'm just trying to get the long lengths of the Starburst fiber. So that looks nice. And I'm going to double check my measurement. So I want it to go back to the point that it just gets to where the eye of the hook is. So I don't want it going three quarters of the way back. And in order to do that, I'm going to adjust the back end of the fly 
of the dubbing loop to actually have a shorter section versus the back end, which will be a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna do another little adjustment here. Try and get some more of those fibers back out of the way. That looks good. I'm gonna do one last trim. Easier to do it here than when you get it into the loop. All right, so you'll notice I've got shorter fibers at the front and a longer taper at the back. And I'm gonna hit my thread with the walnut. The mono has gotta be dry by now, so I'll hit the rest of my thread here. Looks good. Okay, in we go. Grab your stone foe, roto dubber. In that goes. Get everything lined up the way that you want it. And try that again. That looks good. Release. Looks good. And I'm just going to align things. I'm going to bring some of these materials in. They're looking a little long. Do a quick back end trim, and I'm going to leave a little bit of distance or a little length here, which is just going to help bulk up the loop itself a little bit. A couple of spins. Hit it with the Velcro. All right. One last hit with the Velcro. Going to get my thread up and out of the way. I already half hitched it, so now I can just wrap right up the, the hook. And I'm only going to go about half the distance up the hook itself. And I'm going to wrap these fairly close because I'm not so concerned about this uh, wiggling like crazy in the water. What I'm really looking for is just to help cover that, that gap, give it a little bit of um, movement, give it a little bit of color. Again, I'm not too worried about it undulating and moving like the back part. Okay, that looks good. You can see some of the materials cascade or go back, but the majority of them fall short, which will allow for a real nice articulation. All right, so time to tie that off, and then we can get to work on the deer hair. So two loose behind. A couple wraps up in front to lock everything in position. Okay, now the head itself is deer hair. And what I'm gonna do before I apply that deer hair is I'm gonna get one last shot of contrasting colors down. I still wanna have that um, contrasting belly. So I'm gonna use a little bit of the cream marabou and I'm just gonna pull, in this case it looks like about a quarter inch or so. I'm gonna cut it long. I know that's too much material, but I want it to go back and to cover or create that um, that white belly, that's not enough. I want to get those tips aligned, so I'm just going to grab a little bit more. And what you'll notice when you're working with marabou a lot is that it does, it is different. Every piece of marabou, because it's a natural fiber, is a little bit different. I'm just going to lay that down. Again, I want it to go about to the hook eye itself. I'm going to do two loose wraps, pull up on the material to make sure that it's in position. wrap. I just want to make sure. Yep, looks good. Do a quick clip. Okay. All right, that looks good. And now I'm just going to hit it real quick. Same thing that I did before with a little bit of olive on the back. Just stripped off about quarter of an inch and just looking to create that little bit of contrast. I want it to go back to just about the hook eye itself. Looks nice. 
Same thing. Two loose wraps. Pull it up on top. Make sure it looks good. I'm happy with that. Come in front. Come down tight. And now I'm going to clip. Double check again. It looks good. Got that contrast. And just let lock it in place. And then I'm going to grab a little bit more of that ice dub shimmer fringe, just a little hint to put it on top. And I'm going to double these fibers up. And just put it into position on top. Wrap down. And this time I'm just going to Cut, and I'm going to do it a little bit to make sure that it's uneven. Okay, materials locked in position, look good, and now it's time for the, the deer hair. And my goal with the deer hair is really to only do um, two major pieces of each color. So I'm going to start with olive, and I'm just going to pinch off about... Three quarters of a pencil and if you're not familiar with the terminology pencils it's just the way that you drive consistency in your uh, your flies here's just a natural color and I'm just going to grab off again about three quarters of a pencil and now I'm going to mix the materials so all I do is I'm just grabbing them by the tips and I'm just going to pull up and rearrange, move them around, grab different amounts. I'm not worried about keeping everything aligned because I have my hair stacker. And this is going to become the collar. So I've got it blended. Looks pretty darn good. I'm going to grab my stacker put it right in there this is a Renzetti stacker large okay tip should be all set they look good And any random pieces that you see or strays or things that don't look right, you can just pull them out of there and pinch those tips, run your fingers through. All I'm trying to do is clean out whatever fuzz is in there. Now I'm going to measure. Now my measurement I want is just about to go to that uh, the tip of the eye there. So that's about it. It goes just about perfect and I'm going to grab it with my left hand grab my tips and I'm going to snip right next to my fingers basically you can see it's lined up spin my thread because I want my thread to be nice and as compact as possible come over it loose once come down just a little bit twice pull down just a little bit and then third time Come straight down, lock everything in position, come through that deer hair just to cinch everything. All right, that looks good. Okay, materials all look good. Okay, time for the next materials which are going to go on the bottom itself. So the bottom colors are a little different. I've got yellow and I've got cream. So I'm going to do the exact same thing though. I'm going to grab about three quarters of a pencil of the cream. Lay it down and I'm going to grab the exact same amount, about three quarters of a pencil of the yellow. Same process. I'm just going to blend the two by grabbing the tips. So there you can see them, not blended. You can 
through. And I always like having contrast in colors. I think we all know yellow is an attractor for brown trout, uh, throat color, having something that's a little different to the body color, I think is just a trigger point. Okay, same thing. I'm just going to clean the materials. I'm not going to worry about aligning the, the tips any more than what they already are. Just trying to get rid of miscellaneous random fuzz because all I'm interested in is creating a bottom, um, just a bottom color. I'm not putting a collar around the bottom. So I'm just going to cut and all I have is about an inch worth of material. Um, that's too much, but we'll be able to trim that, of course. I'm just going to go directly in front of the last amount of material that I tied. There's two, and now I've got three. I'm just pulling straight down on it to lock it into position. Just come through it. Maybe once twice again just to get things locked in position and now I'm just going to double check make sure that I've got my colors my yellow and cream on the the bottom which looks really good and now I'm just going to do my last stack of materials right on top and of course that's going to be the same colors that I did there before so I'm just going to cut some of these fibers off Okay, looks good. Next, back to my natural color. Again, I'm going to do three quarters of a pencil right there, and three quarters of a pencil for the olive. Looks good. Grab the tips, just start pulling. And this is messy. It's okay. All we're trying to do is blend colors. We're not looking for perfection. In the process of doing this, we're going to get rid of any of the junk materials that are in there as well. Right? So sometimes there's guard hairs that are in the deer hair. That's all going to come out. Let's grab those tips. Looks good. Cut those tips, get them out of the way. Nice. And do about the same amount. Grab about half an inch worth of material. Or I'm sorry, about one inch worth of material. And now I'm going to lay it right on top. Come right up. One, two, just put a little more tension each time. Three. Nice and tight. Okay, just gonna walk through. If a couple of hairs get caught, who really cares? Now we're gonna trim the, the crap out of this so it's okay that it's all big and bushy. What I'm doing is I'm just pulling down and I'm pulling back with my left hand, just trying to green the materials. Now, I have a bad habit of not leaving enough room up front. I'd rather have everything nice and tight versus having a gap there. So I like to cheat. I like to put about half an inch to an inch worth of super glue on there. I'm not going to worry about whip finishing. I'm just going to worry about getting the materials pulled back and then just wrapping that super glue that Gorilla Glue right on top. And with that 100, you can see I can just cinch it down nice and tight. I don't have to worry about a thing. I'll wear out that fly before that comes undone. Okay, here comes the, the fun part, the trimming. So the first cut we're gonna do is right along the bottom. Turn your vise upside down. Make sure it's nice and level and just go straight back. We're just trying to create a nice flat bottom. Try not to hit your, 
marabou fibers that you have going out the, the bottom there. That looks good. Now for the, the top, we don't want to cut these fibers. So you can hold them down and we're going to bevel the razor blade. So beveling the razor blade just like that. Just come up. And do it again. And all we're trying to do is blend the front uh, deer hair in with that back deer hair collar. Okay, now I'm just going to use my scissors. I'm going to trim a little bit across the sides, trying to create that taper. I'm going at basically a 45 degree back. Now the way I like to finish my fly is using a, a lighter and um, I'll just show you guys a little bit you know, what I do. I, I like it because it really helps to create some uniform shapes and, and designs um, and believe it or not it seems like it helps to compact the, the deer hair bring everything tight and into position. And I don't find that it stains the the, uh, the deer hair that much. It like seems to um, take a little bit of the, the deer hair off, but it doesn't seem to miscolor it all that much. And, and the cool thing that I find is that it really cinches everything down. So if you're looking for a way to really make a, a compact, you know, head, and you're not the best at um, getting that deer hair super tight. This just pulls everything together and just makes it look absolutely amazing. So anyway, it it does take some practice. You will have some heads that are. You know sacrificial that don't uh, don't survive um, so I don't recommend that you do it on your your first fly um, but with just a little bit of practice you can do some pretty cool stuff with it anyway you can see how nice and compact that that head is now you can see how it creates a pretty amazing symmetrical shape um, and how it pulls all the, the materials in just making it super uh, compact and super buoyant so anyway that's my little tip on using a Bic lighter to help you